right, what's up guys? It's Devin and this is the prep series that I'm putting together for you guys. And rather than just doing videos of me vlogging my daily activities, what I'm eating, what I'm doing, you guys kind of already have an idea of that. We'll get into more of that as we get deeper into to the prep. But for today's video, I wanted to talk to you a little bit for some of those that might be looking at competing or maybe you're already competing, but I wanted to talk about what to look for when looking for a coach, all right? So let's jump in. All right, so one of the things you wanna look for when going out and looking for a coach, do they mesh with you, right? Is it a good fit? Is the chemistry there? Um, everybody kinda of likes to do things a certain way and when you're doing prep, a lot of that goes out the window. But it does make it easy to adhere when you have somebody that feels the same way you do in terms of maybe how they approach their eating plans, how they approach workouts. Um, so if you can find that, that's a plus. Here's how you do it. If you have a coach that you're interested in, find out who else they work with, right? In the age of Instagram, Facebook, Google, everything else in between, it's not hard to find out who somebody is connected to. So find out who that particular coach that you're interested in working with um, is linked to. Look at the photos. How are they bringing people in on stage? Are they leaner? Are they a little bit more full? Is that the desired look that you're going for? So that's a really good indicator to tell you, okay, we're probably on the same page in how we want to do things. The next step to that is reach out and talk to those people, right? I had several conversations with people that my coach, uh, Skip Hill, has worked with and simply ask them, hey, what's your what's been your experience? How long have you been working with Skip? Uh, what things do you like? Is there anything uh, that kind of disinterests you or that you don't like? And across the board, I heard the same thing. He's an amazing coach, great attention to detail. He's very reactionary, and I'll get to what that means here in a minute, but it's important. Um, and he really explains things well and tells me why I'm doing what we're doing, right? Which leads me into the next part, asking questions. So you've picked your coach or you found a coach. If you can't ask your coach questions or furthermore, your coach won't explain answers to your questions, that should be a red flag right there. Now there's certain points where yes, you kind of just got to get up by your bootstraps and do it. Um, but if you're asking your coach, hey, just out of curiosity, why within this meal plan am I eating 60 grams of carbs here, yet all my other meals are 40 and 50? If they can't tell you, well, I'd like to see you eat a little bit more carbs post or pre-workout because of X, um, then that's a red flag. If your coach just says, because I said so, that's not a good enough answer. Now, I will agree their job is not fully to teach you in the sense of here's how you coach yourself, but they should be able to answer your questions, all right? I get questions from clients all the time. Out of you know, hey, can I substitute this with that? I'll either tell them, yes, this is why, or no, this is why. Here's a perfect example. I have a client who's into prep right now, and she wanted to know if she could substitute liquid egg whites, um, flavored liquid egg whites for regular egg whites. Sure, no problem. Um, macro for macro, they're pretty much the same, so no issue there, and I explained it to her. You should have a coach that should always at least be able to explain why you guys are doing what you're doing. Now, the third part, you wanna make sure that uh, they're reactionary. And what I mean by that, uh, and, and Skip is very good at this, is he'll wait a week or so longer um, at the beginning to make changes if need be, than to jump the gun. Um, a lot of people feel that when they work with a coach, something should always be changing. That's not necessarily the case. If your coach puts together a plan for you and makes zero adjustments and you're getting stronger, you're getting leaner, whatever your goal is, you're continuing to go towards that, there's no need to change anything. So don't always look for your coach to change something. Now, the difference between reactionary coaches and preactionary, I think that's a word, I don't know. Either way, the difference between a coach that's willing to make a change just to make a change and a coach that is willing to wait to see what happens is a big difference, right? If you make changes too early or implement changes too early, especially when you are getting ready for a contest, um, 
it could be changes that had you had held off, you wouldn't have plateaued so soon, or uh, maybe you maybe you made a change and it over exaggerated, and now you've lost more weight than you anticipated, and you're trying to work backwards to fill it back in. So there's a lot of different reasons. So to have a coach that makes a change when it needs to be made, um, and, and it's hard for some of the newer people to understand what that looks like, but that's definitely something that you're going to find in a new coach and or in a good coach. And one of the ways to see that is, is your coach making changes every week? And again, can you ask your coach, hey, out of curiosity, what's the purpose of this change? All of those questions are okay. Once you get to know your coach a little bit better, you kind of get to the point where you stop asking questions because you know what works. One other thing that you're really going to want to make sure that you look for in a coach is how do they interact with you? All right. Because there's some coaches who will just send off a plan. Um, they'll send you your changes and they'll kind of just keep everything to a minimum of business, so to speak, on here's the changes. Here's the answer to your question. If you have one, um, here's what we're doing. Run with it. There's some other coaches that will hold your hand a little bit more and tell you, hey, you know, you, you yeah, you messed up, um, you know, pick it up. We can get it better next week. Um, that sort of thing. So if you're somebody who needs a little bit more handholding, um, maybe don't opt for a coach that is going to be a little bit more, I would say, drill sergeant type, where it's here's the plan, here's what you do, run with it. Oh, you screwed up? Let's go, figure it out. What are you doing, right? That doesn't work for everybody. If you're somebody who kind of is just good with, hey, I just need to know what I need to do and I'm going to go do it, then, you know, find a coach that does that. Um, some coaches like to build rapport. They'll talk to you about, you know, things that are going on in your life. Um, whereas other coaches, really, it's, you know, kind of just don't talk to me unless it's related to your plan or what we're doing. So that's something to look for as well. If you're looking to build a relationship with a coach, um, there's some coaches like that out there, uh, but for some, it's just strictly business. Here's your plan. Here's what you do. Run and do it. Um, so those are my tips when it comes to looking for a coach, whether it's contest prep, uh, whether it's lifestyle coaching, make sure that the coach meshes with you, make sure that they're able to answer your questions, make sure that the changes that they're making make sense to you and they're able to explain why, and they're not just changing things all the time on you. Um, and make sure that uh, personality and how you need to be pushed is matched with how that coach is going to push you. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this. I'm going to have some more videos coming your way, um, talking about different parts of the contest area, um, prepping, things like that. So keep an eye out and I will catch you guys later.